Hey everybody, just a quick video. We're preparing for the challenge and it reminded me about something that I've been uh, wanting to put on the blog for a while. Um, by the way, we're uh, in deep preparation for the next challenge and if you haven't signed up yet, please go to challenge.co and sign up because we, we don't want to uh, annoy anybody who's not interested in doing the challenge this year. So. If you do want to get the notifications about what's going on and when it's happening and all that sort of stuff, you will need to register, even if you've registered in the past, okay? So we want to make sure that everybody gets that information. So challenge.co. Anywho, it got me thinking about one of probably the best bits of advice I've received in the last couple of years. And it's to do with good old pen and paper. Now, with um, planning and thinking so much time we waste if you will spending planning and thinking in our heads it's not a good place to do any sort of thinking hang on Ed, that sounds really weird that's exactly what your brain does it does do that but it does it in a weird way it continually loops particularly negative thoughts You've all probably experienced this, I know I have, where you get into this negative loop and you think, oh, that's not going to work because of this and this and this and this. Your brain's very good at coming up with negatives. It has to, because that's the way you don't get eaten by the saber-toothed tigers. But the best bit of advice that I got was from a book um, which pointed out that when you're doing your thinking, you should be thinking on paper. So planning and thinking on paper, it's so much more constructive. It engages different parts of your brain and I'd really encourage you to try it. In fact, there's a great book called Accidental Genius, which is all about this. I'll put a link under the video here if you want to get access to it. It's a great read. But let me give you the key points now. You can start doing this right away. So there are three key rules uh, when it comes to uh, doing thinking on paper. The first one is remember it's just for you. Nobody's going to see this, put it in a journal or whatever. It's, this is not for public consumption, okay? And therefore, you've got to give yourself permission to be rubbish, that what you write may be crazy, and just no stress, Okay, give yourself, in fact, I start off every time I do this exercise, uh, and I think I got the tip from Accidental Genius, which is I'm going to take a free and easy look at a uh, problem or challenge or plan. The second thing, that, as, as the second rule, if you will, is you, you never take your pen from paper. You continuously write. I remember watching Gary Halbert uh, write sales letters and you think wow that's an interesting occupation just sitting there writing somebody on paper and he always used pen and paper but the most interesting thing about it was I noticed that in he worked with a timer which is our third rule we're going to come back to that but the thing that I noted most was that he never stopped writing he would always continue to write and if you watch professional writers none of them ever stop us amateur writers, on the other hand, we stop all the time. We think, oh, we, you know, how many uh, iPads are there in existence? And instead of just writing like the professional writers do, TK, 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 you know, to come, to come, to come, as Neil Strauss does it, or make something up and check it in editing later, we go off to the internet to research that fact. And guess what? Before you know it, within two minutes, you're watching the latest dog surfing videos on YouTube. We've all been there, right? So, second rule is never to stop. And the third rule, we've already mentioned it, is use a timer. Every smartphone on the planet has a little timer application now. Use it. Why? Why does a timer work? Why is a timer so important? Well, to answer that, I can give you a very practical example. And I can call it the MasterChef principle. Now, I don't know if you've watched MasterChef in the UK or it's pretty much around the world now. It's been a bit of a phenomenon. I think uh, Gordon Ramsay's on it in the uh, US and, and it's a fantastic show. Love it. And a lot of cooking shows, Top Chef is another one that does exactly the same thing. You'll find that a lot of contestants or chef testants, as they say, get um, this challenge where they they lift up a box or mystery box or whatever it happens to be and they've got X minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes to create a dish 
out of that box. And there must have been thousands and thousands of these mystery box challenges on MasterChef over the years. And you know what? I can count on one hand the number of times a chef testant hasn't plated up, as they say. In other words, presented a dish. Now, the dish may have been horrible, no question, but they always present something. Why? Well, can you imagine if you have nothing to say, you have nothing to deliver for judging? This constraint is actually, believe it or not, a key to creativity and coming up with great ideas and great stuff. Creativity thrives on constraints and setting a timer is one of the best constraints you can give yourself, this constraint of time. See, the biggest problem, believe it or not, and you may think I'm crazy for saying this at the moment, but the biggest problem that most of us have is that we've got no constraints. You know, we've got access to everything on the internet now. We can do so many things. That's a problem. Because of the lack of constraint, we don't have that creativity. We don't have that ability to focus and use the power of constraint to create something. Because that exists in every um, creative endeavour. But for the purposes of today, when it comes to thinking on paper, by setting a timer, you are giving yourself a fantastic constraint. So start off with just two minutes and maybe extend to ten minutes later on. Um, you can't do it for more than about, well, the longest I've ever heard is 50 minutes, but that's tough. Um, start off with two minutes and see how you go. You'll be amazed. It never ceases to amaze me how this exercise works. And it's something that we'll be doing a lot of in the coming challenge. Because every successful business person that I've had the pleasure of dealing with, one of the absolute commonalities is their ability to plan on pen and paper because it's efficient planning. You don't go into loop. When you're writing like this, you don't go into loops. One final tip. What happens if you run out of stuff to say? Well, guess what? You keep your pen moving and you literally write. I've run out of things to say. Boy, I hated Dale. Why did he even teach me this stupid thing? What can I write about topic that I have a problem? You keep writing. Okay. And guess what happens? Your brain goes, oh, hang on a second. They're serious about this. They're actually serious. I better come up with something because I don't like feeling stupid. And that's what happens. So I encourage you to do that. We're going to use this technique a lot in the upcoming challenge. Remember to sign up. A couple of the books that I've uh, mentioned, which I really love, are uh, there below the video for links. Uh, make sure you click that and there's a link to the challenge there as well. Um, if you like what you've seen, love it if you would like, share, all that cool stuff. Would really, really appreciate it if you did it um, because it helps spread the word. Very much appreciate it. All right, have a great week and we'll speak soon.